Hello again everybody, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to do an oil painting and it's a fall scene that I'm going to try today on a uh, covered bridge in a park near where I grew up and uh, hope you're going to like it. Uh, I actually have it on uh, a canvas here, 11 by 14 canvas, which is my standard size as you probably know. Uh, but I have an underpainting, a, a burnt sienna acrylic underpainting here and then I have the uh, sketch put on here with some uh, uh, white Sorrel transfer paper which uh, I use periodically when I have canvases that are not white. Um, I use this white transfer paper so uh, we've got that. I want to go over to my computer now and uh, just show you the photographs that are available on the website and, uh, and uh, come back and I will get going. Hold on please. Okay, here we are at my computer, and this is the original photo that I have of this uh, covered bridge that's in this park. It's got a lake and got a little stream here going by. There's a lot of fall color in here that we can work with today, and uh, so that's kind of what attracted me to this. I kind of felt like I wanted to try it. It's getting fall here in my area of the country. Uh, however, uh, we don't see scenes like this in Florida very much, uh, but I know they do a lot of other places here in America and other countries. Um, here's the grid I put on. I use a tool called uh, from a web website called griddrawingtool.com and uh, it's a very neat uh, tool that is free to use. Uh, it's put on by arttutor.com and uh, you just upload an image and decide how do you want your grid made, how many horizontal uh, uh, rows and vertical rows and uh, It'll put it on and get it to your liking. You can just download it and bring it back to your computer and use it. Um, so I have that on the website. <clears throat> and uh, then I always to do a, a value map of some sort. Uh, I've been lately just taking all the color out and using a black and white image to kind of get the darks and lights uh, again to line up and to see, to remind me of where they are and uh, how dark it is in some areas and uh, so forth. And uh, then finally, I actually have a sketch of this that's on the website, and uh, <clears throat> you can go out and pick this up. The links are all down below here, by the way. If you want to download this, uh, you can do it. I've simplified this pretty significantly in this particular sketch, and uh, I'll probably paint a little more than what this sketch shows, but these are the main elements, the bridge, the lake, uh, the uh, key trees along the side of the uh, water here and that sort of thing. So that's pretty much what I want to show you here at the computer and uh, you can go get those uh, images and download them and use them for your own painting. So let me go back to the easel now and we'll get started. <clears throat> Okay, I'm back at my easel now and uh, I want to uh, take you through the, uh, the paints and the brushes and uh, so I have here my, uh, my, my uh, palette set up with my Bob Ross paints uh, and uh, I'll go around the palette very quickly and tell you what they are. I actually have them written here. I have a nice uh, uh, a gray, gray matters uh, canvas, uh, gray matters uh, sheet here that I can actually write on with marker and uh, can tell you what they are in case I forget or say the wrong ones. But this is titanium white, phthalo blue, Prussian blue, midnight black, Van Dyke brown, Dark Sienna, Alizarin Crimson, Sap Green, Cadmium Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Indian Yellow, and Bright Red. And then I have one Grumbacher uh, paint that's uh, Ultra Violet. Um, so that's the uh, paints, the brushes. I have my typical Bob Ross brushes and my big number two inch and one inch brush. I have my uh, half rounds here that I will probably use for some of the foliage on this uh, painting. I have my uh, a few of my fan brushes here, uh, the uh, small one, number three, and a number six larger one. I actually have a filbert brush that I may or may not use. I don't know. I may use it for some of the foliage or the tree branches, uh, tree leaves. Um, then I have my uh, little script liners here that are very usable. I also have a couple of my Trakel uh, uh, synthetic uh, mongoose brushes here that I use for oil painting and they have nice they're flat they have a nice flat end on them uh, for some kind of architectural components these are pretty good to get a nice square edge uh, because you can't get a real square edge with some of the the uh, bristle brushes that are in the Bob Ross set have my palette knife as usual and I have here my uh, 
plate of liquid white that I'm going to use. Instead of covering the whole canvas with liquid white, which is a typical Bob Ross uh, technique, um, I won't do that today. I'll just use the amount of liquid white that I can really use on this painting where I need it. Instead of trying to cover it up, I'll lose my sketch, as you know, uh, which is not fun. So uh, I'm going to zoom in now and get this uh, thing lined up, get my palette placement so you can see it, <clears throat> hopefully and uh, watch me paint this thing. So if you have any questions, I actually have a, another computer up here. You can use the chat window and uh, type in a question or a comment. And uh, I'll uh, try to look at my computer here by my elbow from time to time and see who's uh, chatting with me and try to get an answer to you if it's a question or explain something if it's something you don't understand. OK, I think that's all I wanted to say for now. So we're going to start up here with the sky. Um, this area has a lot of sky that's kind of hidden by the tree. So I'm going to paint this whole area in with a very light blue uh, touch. I'm going to pick up some of my liquid white, just a little my Prussian blue, and make a very light sky. This, in the photograph, this sky is uh, pretty much white. Uh, but I'm not going to paint it that way. I'm going to put, uh, put this very light color of blue here, nice fall day, uh, and uh, I'm going to just fill this in here. Uh, this, this color that's underneath um, is very uh, good for uh, some of the kinds of colors we're going to want to show through uh, in some places. In the sky, I don't particularly want this color in the sky, uh, but I'm using enough liquid white to get the paint to run smoothly, which is what really liquid white does for you when you have it on your canvas. It's just that the, the uh, painting process where you completely cover the entire canvas doesn't work so great if you're trying to uh, use some sort of a sketch or if you have a sketch in mind that you want to try to use. Um, it's not so great for that. So I'm uh, modifying the uh, tried and true Bob Ross and Bill Alexander painting techniques by doing it this way, but I'm using the uh, same types of uh, brush strokes and that sort of thing here for the, for the sky. Um, so let's put a little more white. I'm going to take a little more white and put in here to maybe throw a, a cloud or two in here so that it's not just a big white blob of paint up there. And uh, lighten it up a little more in some spots. And we're going to cover some of this anyway with uh, the, uh, the trees as they're coming up and the leaves over here. So I'm not too worried about uh, what is in this sky because it's going to have some enough things to uh, detract and make it look um, better than just a big blue triangle up there. Okay, so that maybe put just a touch of shadow in the cloud so it gives a little three-dimensionality here. Um, I don't know if you can even see that. It's kind of hard. but uh, So I'll just do this, darken it down just a little, and uh, we'll call that sky done. You can see the, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but I can see the uh, underpainting here coming through a little bit. Um, and that's, that's not bad. Um, it just adds another color dimension, a little bit of depth to the to the painting, to the canvas, and uh, so that will uh, suffice, I think. I'll just throw a little more over here, clean the brush out, add a few more things over here that so when I'm painting the leaves over here, they may show through, um, and that's about it. Okay, that's good for that step. Get my brush cleaned out here. I may not use this brush anymore, actually. Um, I may use it for some of the grass and the, a little bit of the uh, the, the lake and the water down here when I start putting in the uh, reflections. Okay, so we got that. Everybody with me? All right, so now let's see what we're going to start on next. Let's start coming down. Let's see. In here, I've got some trees and I've got the roof of this uh, um, little uh, covered bridge here that has some tree branches and limbs hanging over it. Um, I think maybe I'll just start over here on the right side and start putting in some of the uh, some of the tree um, background. I'm going to use this ochre, a little bit of liquid white again, and uh, some ochre, and uh, 
primarily ochre and liquid white and we'll put an under underpainting back in here uh, show some of these I just kind of block this in and uh, and it's going to come out it's going to come out here further over this and uh, I'll just leave it like that for now um, there's some that hangs over the bridge there's more down in here there's a, a good layer of that that's over the uh, where the leaves have fallen on this this lake down here I'll just put a little underpainting of that right here now to remind me of where those leaves and stuff go okay the other side here on the left side I'm going to add a little bit of red to this to make it slightly orange more orange uh, maybe even a little bit of dark sienna here to uh, give me a little more brown color said I wasn't going to use this one inch brush anymore but I'm using it finding out it's pretty worthwhile for these these big uh, areas that I want to get covered fast and uh, my red and my ochre maybe a little bit of Indian yellow will give me a little better orange color maybe I don't know let's see what it does here it is a little bit different color but it's not different enough I'd like to get a little bit different tone in there if I can a different value or hue actually put in some of my goes down definitely below midway okay that's fast um, in here we've got the water and um, and we've got the edge of the, the bank over here that comes down the bank goes down this way into the water and uh, so let's see here what I can block in for that um, I think maybe I'll try this uh, filbert brush uh, this color of this water is really uh, not sky color at all for the most part it's uh, it's got some uh, red in it it's got some brown in it uh, and uh, maybe just a touch of blue in there to give it a little more violet let's see here over here is what I'm talking about that's about the color I'm not adding any white to this right now and we've got this red sort of orange reflection in here so let me go ahead and put block this in um, it's going to run all the way over here it's going to max uh, mix up with this uh, where the leaves are here in the water so this is you know typically you think you paint the water that's uh, maybe going to be uh, blue like the sky well that's not always the case uh, in uh, fall scenes and winter scenes water takes on really water has no color you've heard me say that before possibly uh, it, it either it takes on the color of what's in it what's under it what's above it uh, what's around it uh, so it has no really uh, color at all because it is transparent when you see it so when you make water trying to make something look like water you have to use the reflections of the colors that are around it um, or in it and all of those tell part of the story I'm going to get back to, there's a bank back here that I want to get back close to um, I've got another pillar here that we're painting around so I'm just blocking 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 in uh, put some more of this dark in here might as well block the whole thing in I can I'll put some white highlights over here to show the reflections um, but um, back in here this is all actually it's even lighter back there when I look at it now it's, uh, it's a lot lighter color back there back in this area back here it has even some blue and white in it um, so let's just throw a little bit of that in get that out of the way
over here there's some of that color okay so that's kind of giving me the uh, the lay of the, the lake and the water here um, over here we've got a bunch of that whiter color in here and this is all bushes and stuff over here all right all right that's a good block in for that all right let's look at this uh, grass in the front let's put a underlying air, uh, area of uh, block this in with some sap green and some yellow ochre um, down here uh, I'll put this darker I'm going to paint this darker than it really is and then we'll come back and highlight it with uh, some of the uh, brighter colors sap green yellow ochre Okay, so this is uh, oh, I hear my lawn service out here today. I asked them to not come on Wednesday, but uh, we've had so much rain and problems uh, with our weather that they haven't been able to uh, get around. So uh, I may have to talk over some noises from our guys doing our lawn cutting out here okay um, let me see there's a little more of this uh, ochre color right in here that I didn't uh, put anything in for yet so let's uh, throw a little more of that in here a little more undercover under color put some over here up here like this okay and it uh, comes down it kind of goes into some areas between these trees all right so i'm just kind of getting this all laid in here as much as i can so i get a total block in of this thing the block in stage is and it kind of looks pretty ugly usually uh, you see here i've got this uh orange and uh not truly orange yet orange enough all right let's see right in here we got a lot of this orange that's got more orange in it coming down to this bank over here so let's lay in some of that color these are just good reminder colors for to tell me what is where and uh, that this is the bank here coming down to the water's edge and the color will help me remember that all right so i still barely see very lightly i can see some of my white uh, color there that uh, my from my transfer paper uh, and uh, it shows me where these trees there's a tree that goes right up there another one here big ones um, and uh, so it helps to block this in you can see the uh, um, see this land back here that's coming down to the water's edge and um, oh, I'm covering up my other pillar there it's the only problem with this block in you kind of have to be careful with it okay so I think that other than the bridge itself that's pretty much um, what I want to do for these big block ends um, the bridge is here um, and uh, I'm going to see if I can get that color let me see if I can get a uh, it's got some red in it let's see if I can figure this out here um, it's sort of a rusty red color that's probably made up of some dark sienna Maybe a little light, lighter color here to lighten it up. A little more red. If you can see what I'm mixing here, but uh, I don't think that's quite the color, but let me see. It's almost the color of this uh, underpainting here. It's got more 
red in it than that, maybe a little more white in it than that. Let's, I'm going to lighten it up just a little so we can see it. Otherwise, you're probably not going to even see this thing if I <clears throat> make it pink. How's that? <laughs> so it goes back in here, and then you see parts of it behind there. All right, and then uh, we can kind of tone that down a little bit with some uh, other colors here, maybe some uh, darker browns, put a little of this uh, dark sienna in it. Okay, that's a good start for that. This is going to be white in here, just off white, so uh, I think I'll let that go. <clears throat> Yeah, these areas of bright color, Lindy, this is kind of what, uh, what's a good good uh, tool to use. I've watched uh, several other artists use this method where they just block the whole thing in and it gets to this stage where it looks really kind of ugly. Uh, but um, I want to get this done and then I want to start focusing a little bit on the, uh, probably do from the back, back to front again, I guess. That's kind of how uh, most of these types of paintings get painted. You don't have to. I've, I've watched artists paint uh, paint the sky in last. Um, it's possible to do that. Um, I almost never do it. Um, Bob Ross certainly never does it. He always starts with the sky and just paints from back to front, top to bottom. And uh, that's typically what I try to do. But uh, I'm going to clean out this big one inch brush. I might want to use it again. Okay, so I'm going to get into some of these trees now, um, and I'm going to put in the, the background first. I'm going to put in these background uh, uh, leaves and uh, see if I can use my big, big old round brush here. It's a half round is what it's called, if you see it, but it's got, it's got so many bristles in it that when you look at it here, um, you can see how many bristles are in it. So each one of those little bristles kind of becomes a brush. So uh, if you get this brush really full of paint, which is what the secret is, you get a lot of paint in there. And then starting up here, you just start putting in, stamping it in. And uh, you can change the color a little bit. Um, leave areas open that are lighter uh, and we'll come back and put a little bit of a darker color over that. I probably should have put the darker, darkest color down first. Um, I'm usually thinking backwards like that because it, when I paint in watercolors it's uh, you paint the, uh, the lights first and put the darks over them. In oils you should put the darks down first and paint the uh, and paint the uh, lighter colors over that. Get some of these darker colors here, a little bit of dark sienna in this brush. And we'll start putting a few things out here to kind of make this happen. Like this. I'm painting the trees, but you don't see the tree limbs yet. If I can get three, three values here, I've mentioned that before, that the uh, three values will definitely let you get three-dimensionality in your painting. So I'm putting this uh, dark sienna on here now. And I'm going to put some greens up there and bring this down a little further. Okay. Um, don't want that to look too mechanical. Okay. Um, you see, let's go get a, uh, get a brush. I don't know if I'm going to try a fan brush. Maybe I'll try this filbert here. Um, get this uh, Van Dyke brown, a little dark sienna. And uh, we'll start here with one of these trees that's um, over here toward the edge. Um, it's hiding behind a bunch of bushes here. And uh, I get more paint than that. you got to have some paint in these brushes when you start a 
something like that. See all that paint that's on there? I just picked that up and uh, it just came right out of the brush. Could use the painting knife for this. Um, I may use, come back and put another um, coat over it with the painting knife. But let's start over here and pull one down this way. Another good tip when you're painting anything close to the edge like this, try not to make it perpendicular with the edge. Don't make it straight up and down. Um, it's a good compositional tip to uh, remember to uh, make give it some angular, something angular, so it doesn't look uh, it doesn't look like it's perfect, perfectly aligned with the edge. Um, okay, we got some here. Let's a few more that. Okay, do that again with a little darker color. See, because I put that all of those uh, that background color in there, it's going to show up here without me having to try to paint between the tree trunks. Uh, but um, if I tried to do it the other way, I'd have problems with that. So the only problem this causes is, is that it gives me a, a little tough time to get a, get a dark tree through here if I want something that's like that. Um, I'm going to get my, my um, script liner brush. I'm going to get some of this paint that's a lot thinner and get a lot of uh, paint thinner in it and uh, come in here and start putting a few, few more things in here that help define these trees a little more. Um, going back to the palette, I'm going to put these in now in a, in a positive way and then I'll come back and, and uh, put some more branches over them. There's just tons of trees and uh, trunks and stuff in here that's hiding back somewhere in front of the uh, bridge somewhere behind it um, but they all kind of go off the top of the canvas here like this go up um, this guy's got some stuff going on here run him off the top having to go over him a couple times just because of the under underpainting it's pretty thick so I can come back and put another dark edge on here to, to uh, make it, give it some shadow, give it some depth. Three values, think of three values. We may have something sticking out here like this, it goes off the canvas. Like this. All right. Um, We've got some very fine ones out here that I need some more of my uh, thinner here to make this thinner. <laughs> yeah, Lindy, there's uh, probably every uh, every way of doing a painting. I know uh, Bob Ross always started at the top and went to the bottom and. Uh, um, a lot of artists I know do do it that way, um, and um, so I I basically put in my all of my uh, block ends, which is a good way to do it. Um, and then uh, I'm coming back and now starting to put in some fine details here to uh, finish up these trees, and then I will come back with one more. Um, going over some of this to put a few of these branches or a few of these um, leaves in front here and uh, kind of put some of that back into the into the painting. Okay, a few more in here. All right, um, I've got this other one that kind of this one that goes out peels out to the left. I think I'll go ahead and put him in. He starts right about here. Yeah, 
and this guy goes all the way off the top of the page like that I think that's not too bad for my first pass and he's got all kind of branches on him he's loaded here so I'm not trying to actually duplicate exactly what I see here I mean I'd be here for hours just trying to paint all the all the different branches and that sort of thing um, so I just want to try to get, give you the impression of this set of trees here that are uh, nicely nestled around this bridge all right here more thinner So you can start your limb at the tree and come out, or do it either way you want to do it. Um, I'll want to put some um, leaves and that sort of thing on these branches here uh, later. But right now, I just want to get the thing laying laying down. Kind of made that messed that up a little bit. Okay, that tree might possibly be a little bit wider if I want to make it a little thicker here. That's good, okay. So I'll leave those like that. We've got a little bit of lighter area in the back that gives you the illusion of depth. And uh, so I want to leave that the way it is. Let me see if I can get a few more of these bright orange colors. I'm not wondering. I may use my... Uh, filbert for some of these and put in some of these colors. I need to clean this thing out. Um, okay, let's see here. So I'm going to find some bright reddish color here and come into here and put in a few. That's a little too red. Put a few of these. Using the side of this brush, it's just scumbling in some uh, bright orange type leaves in there. See how that works? It's just using the side side of the brush and uh, letting it cover and, and uh, go wherever it wants to. Put some more orange down in here. So these are just trying to get the illusion of a lot of bright orange, yellow leaves. Some of them out here on the edge, but let them uh, kind of taper off. These are going to run into the leaves across the way here. So let's put in a few more down here. This should be a little more yellow. I've got to put that roof in before I put much more in there. All right, so I don't want to belabor that too much, but it looks like a nice little set of trees there. On the left side, let's come in and uh, start coming back here and putting some... Uh, I've got my uh, sort of a mid-tone there. I'm going to come in and put in some dark tones now. Um, <clears throat> Go back and get some more of this uh, color here and come down this way and make these darker. More red, more orange. So I'm picking up my uh, Indian yellow, my bright red, my Van Dyke brown, stamping them into this brush and then just sort of letting the brush do its thing out here. Okay. And I'm not going to go back over some of that because if I do, 
I'll just mush it all in and make it uh, all part of the background and I don't want that. So I do want to see this sky come through here. I want to see some holes, some openings, that sort of thing. Uh, but these round brushes, half round brushes, um, are really good for this kind of thing. Give me some bright yellow orange in here. I'm not cleaning out this brush. I'm just going back to the uh, paint, getting a different color of paint, using what's in there, and uh, letting it work its way out here. Okay, so shows a big group of paint of uh, trees back here. All right, now see if we can come in and do something similar. I think this I might try. Uh, let's see here, got a bunch of trees that are back here. I'm going to put some of these background uh, things in to. Uh, fill that in. Uh, something's holding all of this stuff up here. Down here I've got uh, quite a few trees that come down and just sink into the ground. And we've got things that sort of stick out and kind of overlap like this lot of different tree action going on. This is going to be a green. So these are going to come into the land down here and then we're going to make this taper off into the, uh, the water. Okay, so using this fine rigger brush I'm just getting more this paint is uh, it doesn't stick, you need to have more thinner in it. Um, a thin paint will paint over a thicker paint, but the vice, vice versa is not true. It will not, thick paint will not paint over thinner paint. So you have to uh, kind of deal with that. Um, you paint this way. Okay, so now let me put in, I want to put this big old tree in on the left. I'm going to get a lot of this brown paint, Van Dyke brown here in my brush. I'm going to stick him in like right here. Pull it down like that. And go get another load of paint and bring it down. Like that. I've got another one right here beside him. So I'm going to, I'm going to put him down like that. I didn't have a thin enough paint on that one. I had a lot of... Uh, Where'd he go? Right here. Okay, so something like that. All right. A few more. This one over here should maybe be a little darker. I'm going to curve him in like that. This should be wider. This one should be a little fatter. I guess like that. All right, so I'm kind of letting these taper into the, uh, the background here, and uh, so I'm not. I'm pretty happy with that. That doesn't bother me too much. I think that's uh, looking pretty decent. I just don't want to belabor it. I don't want to overpaint it and make it look uh, overworked, as they say. Sometimes you can overwork these things to the point where that you know they're. You spent too much time messing with it, uh, but I'd like to see these dark tree trunks kind of sticking out in some of these areas where you have uh, open sky there. You can always, it's always nice to put a few limbs through there that help show what's holding everything up. Um, over here, this is going to just kind of fade into the rest of the trees. All right, I kind of like the way that looks. Um, maybe just put a few more light touches of this color here get me some uh, if I come back and spend too much time 
stippling over this, I'm going to really mess it up. So I got to be very careful that I don't overkill this area here. I want to put in a few of these really light. Got some white in them, picking up some titanium, lightening that yellow up, and uh, going in some spots of bright brightness back here where I haven't uh, already painted something. Trying to do that and uh, cover up a few of these trunks. Uh, show a few of these limbs coming out like that. There we go. Uh, maybe a couple in here like that. All right, I'll stop on that for now. Let that rest. Let's see a, a couple up here. These can come out a little further like that. Okay. Um, so much for that. I'll put a couple over here that have the same similar color and texture over there. So we don't have just I want to see their color repeated usually. It's a good, it's a good tactic to uh, repeat your colors on both sides of the painting so you don't have uh, everything that's, uh, so it looks like it's, you don't want to look like two separate paintings. Right, okay, so that's good enough for that. All right, now let's look at this, uh, let's look at this uh, covered bridge. And I think I'm going to take my white here, tone it down just a little with some of this color and see if I can slip it in here. I actually had that ochre color, sort of a, which is probably a good color for this type of bridge it would have some reflection on it if it's a white roof it would have some colors reflecting on it from uh, whatever's up above it okay maybe just a I'm just going to use my flat brush but I'm going to change and use my uh, something back in here that kind of shows that roof goes on back there all right and then let's come down to the front pick up some of these colors I got a bunch of colors here I'm going to use for this uh, bridge here reds browns Something like this, maybe. Okay. Could have left this one tree in to put it in last, but I didn't. I may have to restate that tree a little bit. Um, I like the, the change of color here. I don't want it to be all one color. a little bit of that back there and we can maybe paint those trees back over that since they're in front of it. So we'll destroy it a little bit and then we'll paint it back. Okay, so that's the bridge pretty much. Um, the side of the ground over here where the grasses are, this is sort of a sliding down into the, the water type of action. So let's put in a few of these types of things like this. And uh, it gets really dark back there in the back. Uh, back in here, it's really dark. It kind of offsets this uh, bridge down there. Uh, there's more dark in other places, but I'm not going to labor that too much. This. Uh, Runs along the bottom there. <clears throat> okay, let's see. The, um, all right, I think I'm going to uh, 
See if I can work on this. I'm going to get some greens in here. I haven't put any greens in here yet to speak of. Um, I've got this big area over here that's got a big bush in it. Uh, it really comes down over this grass. Um, use my fan brush and just sort of put in some things here that stick up, that overlap. And it covers this water actually. Like that. Um, this thing I did with my knife, I'm not particularly happy with the way that looks right now. Um, I want to I want to add some colors to that, some things that make it look more grass-like, I guess, or it looks like it's almost a vertical wall, and it's not a vertical wall. It's uh, it's going down to the water here. I'll put in some other colors here. It's over. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, okay, okay. Um, where else? Okay, back here we've got the greens. That's where I put some green in before. Uh, let's see here. Back in here. Got the little feathery look back there. Out there is really water. Um, Okay, these things have a. Uh, how, are we doing? how are we doing on time? 43 minutes, huh? Not bad. I was going to try to get this done in an hour if I could. Uh, there's some really dark stuff going on back here in the shadows. So I want to show that. Um, I'm going to use my. flat brush here to sort of put this little pillar in and it goes down into the water With that there's uh, things here that sort of have a reddish cast to them but they're like little blocks or something that kind of set underneath here that are part of the, the bridge itself put a few of those in here's one here See, okay, and then over here is where the other part of the bridge structure supports over here. And that hits the water too down here. All right, so there's my rough look at my bridge. Um, the water off in the distance there, give me a little bit of a liquid white and uh, some of this bluish gray color and we'll put in this water back in here. And uh, there's a bright area here. That doesn't look very much like water, does it? <clears throat> well, I gotta, I gotta make this uh, pillar here darker so that it stands out from what's behind it, or what's, yeah. So we'll make it a little grayer. Again, I'm like not even looking at the photograph hardly anymore now. I'm just looking at what I've got here on the canvas, what it looks like, and how I'm going to make it look like a. Uh, the edge of the water going back here. And you know the thing that makes water look like water is the uh, vertical brush strokes. Right? It makes it, it gives you that reflectivity that you want to see. I need a drink of water, folks. Hold on.
Okay, um, so that's starting to look like water back there. It's dark, there's a shadow <clears throat> that comes across that water in here. This whole area here is darker. I'm using this Trakel synthetic mongoose brush right now to uh, give me some flat make that look a little rough along here so it doesn't look like it's just a nicely cut off it's got some things going on there got a shadow that kind of falls under this bridge and we still have vertical reflections coming down okay now this has got some red reflections in it from the bridge so let's put some of those in I'm just picking up whatever's on my palette here and throwing those in um, I have another area that's lighter back there I have to lighten up in there um, Okay, over here, same kind of thing. It's pretty much the same type of reflections, although I'm reflecting now some of the, the water. So these vertical things, vertical brush strokes, tell you it has to be water, right? Even this thing needs to have a little reflection in it. There we go. So all this back here, this has some reflections, but I'm not going to dwell on it. Uh, I'm going to put a highlight <coughs> in this area right in here, lighten it up. Uh, it's just a uh, nice little reflection of some sort there. And then uh, all this area in here, whoops, I got green in there. Uh, these are all leaves that have been laying there in the water and stuff like that. So I'm going to just sort of put in, scumble in some ochres and yellows across here on top of that. I already have that, so I have that underpainting. So I'm just going to kind of make these scumble across, uh, give me that rough textured look of leaves laying on top of the water which is what they really are. Change the color, add a little thickness, smooth some out, and uh, so I'm getting this nice little glassy look, at least what I can see behind me. I look in the monitor. <coughs> I'm sorry, my throat is giving me trouble today. Okay, over here, this gets really dark back in here again. As a, uh, we could actually even have maybe some of these things look like they're reflecting in the water down here, maybe, I don't know. Uh, some of these little trees would look like they might reflect, but they're gonna have to be lighter uh, than uh, the water in this case. Uh, so that's just some of the some of the fine tuning. Jackie Harrison, hello. Good to see you. Glad you joined us. I'm getting your message. Welcome. All right. Um, we're getting closing in on this thing here, folks. I've got some stuff to do here on the right side to finish it off. Uh, I think there were a few places up here that could be filled in a little bit more maybe I don't know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess with that too much I'm afraid I'm gonna mess it up um, sometimes you gotta know when to leave things alone these are little things that are part of the bridge structure here I don't want to over, over, overpaint that okay um, let's go put these trees back in here that we had in before. I'm going to have to get a little more darker paint. Come back over that guy. When I do that, I pick up the red that's on there, so i got to wipe my brush, come back and hit it again. Okay, so that it uh, 
There we go. <coughs> okay. What is the stand out? It has some dark. This is sort of the mark of this particular bridge area where this trees are right through there. They're in front of the bridge, not behind it. So you got to make sure they they get painted on last. Same with this guy over here. I'll make him repaint him a little bit darker. That one the same way. These can have a little bit lighter color on the left side. I think the sun is kind of coming from the back toward us a little bit. Um, so I'm just put a few marks and things in here to tone this down a little bit in some areas. Make it look like it's a structure instead of uh, something you don't know what it is. Over here we've got some things going on. I've got some leaves and things are laying around in here. I'm going to come back and put some grasses. This is really the edge here. We've got some really, uh, I'm going to put some, well, let me just use my big brush with that. I'm, I don't want to mess around with this small brush any longer here. Um, in here we've got some <clears throat> sap greens. And let's put a few of these in here. So I'm just using sap green. I got a little bit of this yellow on this brush. And I've got a kind of a mixture in here so I can double stamp it. I can get the uh, greens. I can get the yellows. Okay. Um, come back and get a few more darks in some areas. Should be darker in some of this area anyway. Close this corner down so that it's not doesn't take you right off of the page over there. Um, you see I got a few of these. Uh, don't want to forget to put in some leaves on these trees up here before I'm done and then Lindy's going to tell me to add some birds I'm sure. Right, a little bit of this. I want some white across here. Light this up. There's a sort of a shadow that comes across there, and it makes this area lighter. And this a little more orangish over here. So this, this big round brush just does wonders when you're messing with uh, <laughs> foliage and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put some more, me some more thinner in here and uh, loosen this paint up so that I can put a few more things. We have some things going across in the water like this that sort of stick up and uh, they're part of the uh, stuff that's growing on this side of the water. So it adds a little more dimension to that. Um, some of these I can pull up the greens or whatever. So it's just kind of the stuff you'd see at the edge of the edge of the water. Okay. Now, okay, this, I think I want to change a little bit of the tone in this out here. It's almost too, too perfect. Put a little more, uh, maybe some shadows in there from like the trees are making a shadow and the leaves aren't all there are. Something like that so that it, we don't have this one big area that's just all bright yellow. And I'll come back and put a few more this uh, bright yellow in here, maybe in some areas. Pick up a little of my white. Okay. A little of this. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're close to one hour. That's really pretty good. I'm happy with that. Put in a few 
things hanging off these trees here that look like they're I haven't dropped all their leaves yet off of this guy. We dropped a few, but not all. Ah, not like that. Let's put a Probably I don't really need birds in this one. Lindy, what do you think? Are you there? Lindy's my conscience on putting birds in these. Okay, probably the scumble effect is a better way to put those in, but I don't want to do too much of that. And let's leave a little glob of trees, a little, some leaves up here on the top that kind of makes that look a little better. Maybe some here, a few there. All right. Um, Okay. I think Lindy's preoccupied. Okay. Well, this is for her. We're going to put a... Got to get thinner than that. That's too fat. My fine point and just... Put in a couple of little things sewing around here like that, maybe. All right, uh, what else can I do? I think I'm going to stop and uh, put a signature on this thing somewhere, maybe over here. Looks like a good area. Kind of left an area that's. I can put this in without too much. These darker paint. You have to come back and put this in again later. <clears throat> All right, this is good enough. It's really hard to see that. I'm probably going to redo that. All right. Um, about an hour. I think we've uh, covered about everything I could uh, try to show you here. And uh, move that over to center and zoom in and take a look at it here from a distance. I think that's probably pretty good. I see this looks a little funky here. I'm going to have to put that tree in front of that branch or there. What else? Anything else look weird? A little shadow on maybe the side of this tree. So I'm not going back with the with the knife or anything like that, trying to give these tree trunks a lot of texture. Um, they're not really the the focal point of this. I just want to show that there's groups of trees that are sort of floating around out there and. Uh, Let's don't belabor that too much. Okay, I did put a couple of little things that look like birds in there, but uh, that's all for now, I think. These over here on the left look like they stand out. There's nothing really in front of them too much. As I analyze this, I may make a few other changes, uh, but pretty much this is the way I'm going to leave it. Um, and I uh, probably won't do too much more to it, I think. An hour, that's not too bad. Okay, folks, I'm going to zoom back and really stop this time. <laughs> Glad you joined me today. I hope you will give us a chance. There's the uh, photographs are on my website. There should be links below here to go get the original photo and the uh, sketch and everything else. So uh, uh, if you like the piano music that you heard before uh, while you're waiting, uh, 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 Antonio Romo's uh, fellow that I've picked up his piano music. He lets me play it on my channel and uh, I really like his music. So uh, if you do too, look up his uh, website AntonioRomo.com. Check out GridDrawingTool.com if you want to make a grid on one of your uh, paintings, one of your photos. And uh, give this a try. Let me know how you do. Uh, 
I'm glad you're here today and check out my website, my Facebook page and uh, and if you like this please uh, click like. If you uh, want to share it with your friends I'd be happy for you to do that and if you're not a subscriber please subscribe and uh, uh, you'll get notified uh, when I have another painting coming up. I usually try to do at least two live broadcasts every month. Sometimes I slip in a third painting that I don't do a broadcast for. And uh, so I'll leave it at that. And until uh, I see you again, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye-bye.